Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escafe Online. And this evening, I'm going to be making the chocolate frangelico truffle assessment. So knowing that, let's get started. I've got my sanitizing solution on my table. I cleaned my whole table down before I started, and I'll be cleaning it down when I'm finished with the solution. I've got it in a spray bottle and also a container with a rag. Be sure to have these in your assessment photos because it's something that we're really looking for because safety comes first always in the kitchen, and this is part of your safe practice, your sanitation. So knowing that, I'm going to be putting those under the table and then getting started. For this assessment, there's just a few ingredients and it just makes a really wonderful little dessert. It's so nice to have after dinner or as your dessert. So we're going to be using our single cream, which is also known as heavy cream. This recipe has um, in Australian origin and I did some research and their simple cream is at about 35% which is the same as our heavy cream. Our heavy cream is at about 36%. So go ahead and use your heavy whipping cream for this. And I'm also going to be putting in my unsalted butter which I've got at room temperature. I'm going to take this over to the stove, warm it up to about 140 degrees, a light simmer just like the ganache that we've been making. So we're just going to gently simmer this on the stove. The butter is going to be melting. And then we're going to pour this over the chocolate, like the ganache that we've made so many times. We're getting really good at it. And it's so neat to see all of the uses for ganache, too. So we're going to give this butter a chance to melt. I'm just kind of helping it go around a little bit. I'm going to bring it to a nice little simmer. And I've got my chocolate all chopped up in my bowl on the table, ready to go. Let me get this warm. It's good to use a thermometer or you can just watch for the simmer. You can tell when it's warm enough. So we're just going to let it go a little bit longer to make sure it's good and hot and it's going to melt that chocolate for us. And I'm here if you have any questions. What's nice about this truffle mix is it gets pretty firm and it's easy to work with. You're going to be very happy with it. So we brought this to a nice simmer. I'm just going to be pouring it over my chocolate. And I'm just going to let this steep in. Because when, um, when you start stirring it, it's going to be cooling it off right away. So you're just going to want to kind of let it work on its own for about a minute. And with this recipe, since it's a little bit thicker, there's more chocolate in it, I cut my chocolate pieces pretty small to help them out. And we have a question. Can I use melted butter? The question is, can you use melted butter? Um, sure you can, but in your assessment, try to do it as stated in the recipe. The butter is melting with the cream, but you can always add it in melted if you like. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this in. Once it's all incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and add my frangelico, which we talked about before in one of the webcasts. It's one of those really nice liqueurs. It's a product of Italy, has a real nice hazelnut flavor. It's a sweet liqueur. And it's wonderful for truffles, and you can soak cakes with it, and you can just make so many things. Mousses, 
very nice flavor, something very, very good to have in your kitchen. So now that our chocolate lumps are stirred out, I'm just going to scrape this down to make sure that I don't have any little pieces of chocolate in the bottom. And I've got a couple of little lumps there, so I'm going to be stirring them out. With this trustful assessment, go ahead and use the Frangelico, but you can also change it up in time too. That's what's so great about this recipe. You can add some cream de menthe for a nice mint truffle, or you could even add a little bit of Kahlua or any of the liqueurs that we talked about. So I've got my Frangelico and I'm gonna go ahead and add it in. It's kind of a lot, it's three ounces, so I'm just gonna add half at a time. This is gonna go into the refrigerator so it can set up so you can roll it and pipe it. What you wanna do is put it in the refrigerator maybe for like 10 minutes, depending on how cold your refrigerator is. Then you're going to stir it because you want it to be at a semi-solid state. And a good way to, to describe a semi-solid state would be Maybe um, if you have a stick of butter that's at room temperature and your kitchen's not too warm, that would be semi-solid. So it's workable, it's not hard, but it's still sh holding its shape so you can work with it. So this is perfectly incorporated. It's gonna be going in the fridge. As soon as I scrape it down, then I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and stir it every now and then. So as with anything chocolate, it can kind of get messy. You're going to want to keep your workstation clean. Kind of move some of these things out of the way. And I have some mix that I made earlier that I put in the refrigerator and I was stirring it every now and then. And it's at a semi-solid state. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it a little. We have a question. What should I do if we don't use alcohol? The question is, what can you use if you don't use alcohol? You can use a little bit of extra cream, and you can add a little bit of extract to it, or just use a little bit, three ounces, fluid ounces, extra cream, and um, that'll add the liquid to the recipe and also a little extract. So that'll work too. So these truffles, you can pipe them out, or you can scoop them out too. So I'm just going to fill my bag. My mix is still a little soft, but we're just going to kind of work around it. And I've got the pastry bag with the star tip, and I'm just carefully piping these. And you can also scoop them out. And you can leave them in this pipe state to serve them, or you can roll them too. So I've got one of my dishers here. So I'm just going to scoop some out on my tray. And then I'm going to return these to the refrigerator. And then we can work with them after they cool off just a little bit more. And I'm here if you have any questions. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the refrigerator. And I have a tray that I was working on earlier. I'm going to pull that out. Okay, so I have some truffles that I piped out earlier. And as you can see, they're pretty cute in their pipe state. They kind of have a little bit of tips on them, but you can put them in a paper cup and serve them just like that as a truffle, or you can roll them out into a ball. 
And I also have some truffles that I scooped earlier that are kind of already in a ball that you can roll. And then we're gonna be rolling these in some nuts and you can roll them in cocoa, you can roll them in just about anything. Sprinkles, coconut, whatever you like. Pistachio nuts are really nice. You can roll them in powdered sugar, but be mindful the powdered sugar is going to, um, that'll dissolve on you a little quicker. So just be mindful of that. And we have another question. Is it possible to have white chocolate truffles? It is, you'll make those with white chocolate, but you can't substitute white chocolate in this recipe. You'll have to find a recipe that you like that is strictly for white chocolate truffles because the white chocolate is a lot different than the dark chocolate. It's got a lot of milk solids in it. It's got a lot of sugars. So just be mindful of that, that recipes with dark, white, and milk chocolate are not interchangeable. And we have another question. Why are you working with the gloves? The question is, why am I working with the gloves? Because I don't want to get my hands dirty. <laughs> and um, the truffles warm up also a lot in your hands, and my hands are kind of warm today. But typically, when I'm working with um, chocolate, Truffles, I'll wear gloves, but you don't have to wear gloves. You can use your bare hands just fine. So I'm picking up some of these stars that I piped out, and I'm just rolling them into a ball. So that's a good way to start your truffle if you don't have a scoop or if you don't want to scoop them. And we have another question. How long were the truffles in the fridge before you rolled them? The question is, how long were the truffles in the fridge before I rolled them? I had them in there for about a good 15 minutes, depending on how warm the mix was when you put it in there and how warm your kitchen is and how warm your refrigerator is. Those are all factors. If you're in and out of your refrigerator, it's not going to be as cold as it usually is. So you'll be able to tell that you can handle them. If you can't handle them, put them back in. They need more time, maybe 10 more minutes. So you should be able to handle them so easily and roll them. So it's nice about piping these out too. If you don't have an exact scoop size, you can pipe them to the size that you like. As you can see, the truffles that I piped out are a little bit smaller than the scooped ones. And it's nice because they're just one bite. These are more two bites. It's whatever you like. And we have another question. The question is, someone's hands are also very warm <laughs> and it's hard to roll because you have things melting in your hands. I would try wearing a pair of gloves or even two pairs of gloves will help with that a lot. So definitely if you have warm hands, try rolling with some gloves on. And you can double them up. These are size large gloves so I could easily put two pairs on. So I'm gonna just change my gloves really quick get some of that stickiness off, and then we're going to go ahead and finish some of these. So I have some truffles that I finished earlier on a plate, so we'll show you those. I've got them rolled in cocoa, which is a Dutch processed cocoa, that darker cocoa, some almonds, some sprinkles, and a little coconut. I took a plain white plate and I just did some little decorative work with some pipe chocolate on there. I did a little scrolling, which is easy. If you need a little more practice, you can go with just some dots. And then on the rim, I just made some chocolate lines, very easy. You don't even have to use a bag for the chocolate lines, you can use a fork. So keep that in mind for a plain white plate. So let's go ahead and roll some of these truffles. I've got some bowls over here with some almonds and some sprinkles and some cocoa. So I've got a pretty good sized bowl so I can kind of work my way around in there. If your bowl is too small, you might end up um, having the nuts or the cocoa powder splash out a little bit. And I've got a little chocolate on my plate. 
I don't know. For some reason, chocolate has a tendency to jump places. <laughs> I swear it does. It just ends up everywhere when you're working with it. I don't know if it's because it shows up. So I've got some sprinkles here, just some white and dark sprinkles together, and I'm just rolling my truffle. So easy. The truffle is nice and firm, and it's not really cool in this kitchen either. So um, definitely something that's very workable. You're not going to have a hard time with these at all. How long can I store a truffle? How many of truffles? The question is, how long can you store the truffles? Well, how long can you stop from eating them is more the question. Chocolate, very good. Everyone loves it. I would say you could store them um, for about a week in the refrigerator, wrapped up nicely so they don't get wet. And keep in mind, too, be mindful of the date on your cream that you're using when you're making things like this. It's going to be a big factor. So I'm just switching over to rolling in some almonds. This is nice, too. You can use hazelnuts. You can use pecans. Very nice. Even pistachios look really beautiful if you can get your hands on some of those and get them um, kind of ground up a little bit. Very pretty, especially for the holiday. The green on the chocolate looks amazing. You can uh, flavor that truffle with maybe a little Grand Marnier. We talked about that earlier. And we have another question. Can they be frozen still? And how long can they be kept if they can? The question is, can the truffles be frozen? You can freeze them, but the thing that you want to be careful is sweating when you thaw them out. Or even when um, they're in the freezer, make sure they're wrapped up really tight. I would say you could store them for three or four weeks in the freezer as long as it's a steady temperature. So now I'm just rolling these last truffles in this Dutch process cocoa powder, which is such a pretty color. You can use the natural, but for the truffles, I like to use the Dutch process. So I'm just kind of rolling it in there. So easy and just so elegant. And I've got some of these little truffles too. So this is our truffle assessment for today. If you have any questions, make sure that you get them in soon. And we do have another question. How do you prevent them from melting when giving it the flares of the gift? The question is? How do you prevent them from melting when giving it the flares of the gift? The question is, how do you prevent the truffles from melting when you're giving them as a gift? Well, you're going to want to keep them in a cool place in a refrigerator before you're giving them away and um, maybe let the person know that you're giving them to to store them in the refrigerator. So if you're going to put them in a little paper cup and a nice box, go ahead, finish them off like I did here, get them boxed up and put them in the refrigerator until you deliver them. And it's a very nice gift, very impressive if you're going to give someone these for a gift. They'll be sure to love them. It's a very nice flavor with the Frangelico, which I said, like I said, we talked about that earlier. A nice hazelnut liqueur. Here's the bottle again. And I also have a few other liqueurs to talk about tonight, keeping up with our tradition of talking about our after dinner drink. So I have two here that are typically a product of Italy, but this brand in particular is a product of Holland. And this is called Galliano. And it has, um, it has a nice golden color, which um, is said that the golden color um, was, uh, was given to Galli the Galliano because of the gold rush in the 1890s. So that's kind of fun, historical. An older liqueur, it's been around for a while, super cute bottle with a long neck on it, kind of slender, kind of sleek. And this has a flavor of anise, and it also has a citrusy herb flavor, and it's topped off with a kind of a strong vanilla flavor. Very unusual, you'll like this a lot. It goes nicely with chocolate too. And a lot of other desserts in your kitchen, this is kind of really fun. It has a real different, distinct flavor. And we also have the Sambuca, which is an anise liqueur. It's a blend of anise and licorice. Um, 
extracts and oils. This is a product of Italy. It's got Roma on here. And this is a sweet liqueur. And it's just a really, really nice flavor. Goes nicely with chocolate too. A Sambuca chocolate truffle would be really nice. It's typically served with a few coffee beans in the cordial glass, maybe three in the bottom. And a lot of times it's served with a little bit of water too and maybe ice because it's a pretty strong liqueur, but it's delicious. Try it, you will love it. These are both really nice and I think that you would be really happy having either or both of them in your kitchen. The difference is, is the Galliano has a licorice, but it's topped off with a little vanilla. So lots of fun. And I have another fun thing to talk about. The school is planning a trip to France in October. It's a guided wine and food tour, which is just gonna be amazing. You're gonna be visiting the city of Nice, which is beautiful. And you'll also be visiting the Auguste Escoffier Culinary Museum. And you'll have a chance to meet Michel Escoffier, who is the great grandson of Auguste Escoffier super nice guy wonderful trip and you'll have a lot of fun you'll visit paris too you'll eat a lot of great food visit a lot of neat please neat places and um, vineyards and it'll just be really nice doing a lot of shopping too so we'll have some more information on the trip so keep it in mind there's a little time to think about it but i'm sure if you go you'll be happy to enjoy it so this is our webcast for today, and thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next week.